Hello, Bronco Maniacs, and welcome to Mr. C's presentation on Long Division with Decimals. Yes, you may notice I'm sporting the orange. Broncos just made the Super Bowl. I don't know when you're watching this video, but if it's in 2014, you'll know that the Broncos are about to beat the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. That's right. So here we go. Sorry, I didn't mean to get off track. Long Division with Decimals. This is actually useful. There's a bunch of applications to Long Division with Decimals. I'm going to tell you about them right now. And why is this important? How are you actually going to use this in real life? Well, first of all, if you want to convert fractions into decimals, I think this is the easiest way. We'll get into it later, but if you learn how to do this now, you can very easily learn how to convert fractions into decimals. All right. Secondly, it's going to help you to get rid of remainders. And we're going to do that right in like just one minute. I'm going to show you how to take a remainder from a division problem and turn it into a decimal instead. It's kind of cool. Uh, and then finally, when you're dividing up money into groups, you're really dividing with decimals, right? If you have change left over, then you're dividing up in, or you are going to wind up with decimals afterwards. It's going to help you to break up money into groups. Okay, so let's get right into this. I don't have all day. So let's do this. First problem. No, 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 no. 12.8 divided by 2. All right, we're going to set this up just like a normal long division problem. If you don't know how to do normal long division, you're watching the wrong video. Stop right now and check out my video on long division. But for now, assuming that you do know how to do long division, we're going to set it up the same way. 12.8, right? Underneath that little division hut, divided by 2. And we're going to start doing it the exact same way. How many times does 2 go into 1? It doesn't. How many times does 2 go into 12? Well, it goes in six times because six times two is 12. 12 minus 12 is zero. Woohoo! All right, so we're going to drop down that eight. But before we drop down that eight, here's the new rule. We're going to take this decimal point and we're going to pop it up top. Okay? So you see how it's right next to the 12 here? We're going to move it up right next to the 6. We're going to drop that 8 down. We're going to see how many times does 2 go into 8. It goes in 4 times, and we know that because 4 times 2 is 8. And 8 minus 8 is 0. Woohoo! This was an easy one. There's no remainder. So the answer to 12.8 divided by 2 is 6.4. And if you want to check it, you say 6.4 times 2 equals 12.8. Okay, so that's our answer. Woohoo, 6.4. All right, let's do another one. 13.2 divided by 5. We're going to start by setting it up the same way we normally do. 13.2 divided by 5. How many times does 5 go into 1? It doesn't. How many times does 5 go into 13? It goes in twice. And we know that because 2 times 5 equals 10. Okay. 13 minus 10 equals 3. And before we drop this 2 down, look, here's our decimal point. So we are going to move it up into the answer up here. Okay, directly up above. So now we can drop down our 2. How many times does 5 go into 32? It goes in 6 times because 6 times 5 equals 30. But 32 minus 30 equals 2. Now! Here's how we're going to get rid of a remainder. Look, there's your remainder, right? You would say, well, it's 2.6, remainder 2. No, we're going to get rid of that remainder. And this is how. If you know anything about decimals, and you should, if you're watching this video, you know you can add a zero to the end of a decimal. And you haven't changed the number. You change how we say it. We say this 13 and 20 hundredths now instead of 13 and 2 tenths. But we haven't changed the size of it at all. So we just added a we added a zero to the end of a decimal, just like you would if you were adding or subtracting decimals and you needed to. Now we can drop down that zero. Okay? We can say, how many times does 5 go into 20? It goes in 4 times because 4 times 5 equals 20. 20 minus 20 is zero. No remainder. So here is our answer. 13.2 divided by 5 is 2.64. Two and 64 hundredths. Okay, now remember this adding the zeros rule. It's very important. We're going to use it again right now. Okay, so here we go. 606 divided by 1.5. Oh no, oh no. There's a decimal point in the divisor. 
How are we gonna deal with that? I'm gonna show you. We start out by ignoring it completely. That's right, we're gonna do nothing. We're gonna go 606 divided by 1.5. And we're gonna ignore that decimal point for now, but I'm gonna circle it because we're gonna use it again later. I, want, I don't want you to think of this as a 1.5. I want you to think of this as a 15. So just ignore it, it doesn't exist. How many times does 15 go into six? Doesn't go into six. So okay, how many times does 15 go into 60? Let's see, let's skip count. 15, 30, 45, 60. Goes in four times. <clears throat> because four times 15 is 60. 60 minus 60 is zero. We're gonna drop down our six. Okay, how many times does 15 go into six? It doesn't go in at all. It goes in zero times. Zero times 15 is zero. Six minus zero is six. We have a remainder. We don't have a decimal point. What do we do? Okay, if you know anything about whole numbers, you will know. Okay, if you learned this when you're adding and subtracting decimals, you know that every whole number has an invisible decimal point. Okay? It doesn't, look, we haven't changed the number at all. 606, point nothing which you should also know, ooh, so I can add a zero here. <gasps> and I didn't change the number at all. Whoa, I put in my invisible decimal point and I added a zero. And then before I bring it down, I'm also going to add it into my answer. Oh, whoa, it's like a million decimal rules all coming together in one giant decimal rule party. Woohoo! It's going to be hard to keep track of, and you're going to have to practice this in order to get good at it. Okay, but think about it. We had a whole bunch of rules come together here. We added our invisible decimal point, and then we added a zero after it, which we can do. And then when we're dividing, we added our decimal point right up above where it was in the question. Now we can drop down our zero. Okay. How many times does 15 go into 60? Ooh, we already did that one. We know it goes in four times. Cool. All right, because four times 15 is 60. Yes, we got rid of our remainder. Okay, there is no remainder. Woohoo, we're done. No, you're not done. What? We're not done? Yeah, look, remember what I said about this little decimal point that's in the divisor here? We have to change our answer for each digit that comes after this decimal point in the divisor, we are gonna move the decimal point in our answer one space to the right. <gasps> what? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of the decimal point where it is and move it one space to the right. So the answer to what is 606 Divided by 1.5 or 1 and 5 tenths, the answer is 404.0. Okay, it's not 40.4 because we had to move the decimal point one space because there was one digit behind the decimal point in the divisor. Now, let's imagine that the decimal point were over here and it were 0.15 or 15 hundredths, then we would actually move our decimal point two spaces and we'd have to add a zero there and it would be 4040 but since there's only one digit right there's only one digit behind the decimal point in the divisor we're only going to move it one space okay oh my gosh that is hard and you're gonna have to practice it a lot and maybe you want to rewind and check out how I did each one of these problems again ask a teacher for help find somebody who knows how to do this and get some advice on how to become a master at dividing with decimals because it's gonna be very useful, okay? But for now, let's quickly talk about what did we learn here? Well, we learned a bunch of things. Long division with decimals is really similar to regular long division. There's only a few new rules that you have to keep in mind. Secondly, you can add zeros after a decimal point if you need to. We already knew that. If you learned how to add and subtract with decimals, then you already knew that you could add zeros. You can do the same when dividing with decimals, okay? Uh, and as you should have already known, there's an invisible decimal point after whole numbers. Okay, so use that. Uh, you're going to be able to get rid of remainders if you start to add that invisible decimal point. And then you can add zeros behind it, right? Um, and then finally, one of the most important rules, don't forget decimal points in the divisor. 
all right? Because you're going to have to move the decimal point in your answer to the right-hand side, okay? All right, you got to try this. You're going to have to play with it, practice it. You're going to have to screw it up, get it wrong, figure out what you did wrong so you can back it up and get it right. That's part of learning. So I'm going to try these three problems, 96 and 3 tenths divided by 3. I think that one's kind of easy. This one's not so easy. 27 and 408 thousandths divided by 0.2 or 2 tenths. That one's tough. A bunch of rules that are conflicting there. And then finally, 42 and 2 tenths divided by 12. All right, get excited. Okay, get your brain ready for this. You can use this video again and again and again if you need to practice or if you need to see it done. Uh, or really, you should find somebody who knows what they're doing and ask for some help now that you kind of have a starting point. Okay, get this done. Become masters of this. I will see you next time.